$1,500 to get this thing fixed up, and it's old, and it's got tons of miles. Is it even worth it? Let's take a look. So this is a 1999 Toyota Tacoma. Some people have commented, I thought you guys don't work on old cars anymore. This is not what I consider old. 98, 99, 2000. What I mean by old is 60s, 70s, and 80s. Those are old. We don't like working on those much anymore. But this is definitely within our realm. This one came in with some oil leaks. And also, the bumper is so rusted, they provided a new bumper they'd like us to install it. But the question is... With this many miles, I mean, if this was a Chevy truck or, or an old Ford with getting close to 300,000 miles, you might think twice. 1,500, two grand, it starts getting up on the price. It's like, is it even worth it? But on this vehicle, absolutely it is worth it. This vehicle probably has another 100,000 miles it could go. Very, very likely. Let's go ahead and take a look around this thing. So here's the front of this Toyota, and you can tell right away that the headlamps have been replaced. They were probably yellow and ugly and really hazed over really badly, and so on in the past went ahead and replaced them with some projector-style headlamp housings. And we can tell right away on the tag that it's a house divided. Someone's a K-State fan, and someone else is a KU fan. As we go down this side, you can see it has some nice wheels on it. They look to be original Toyota wheels. The body is in pretty good shape. I don't see any serious rust or dents or anything down this side. It looks very presentable, actually. And on this side is equally as nice. You can see it has an ARE topper on it. Also in good condition. We come around to the back. You can see that the bumper is off. Magic Mike is working on this today. He's got halfway done with his job. We have the OK to fix everything already. And over here on the ground, you can see the rusty old bumper especially where the tow ball would go, the receiver part of it. You can see it's just really, really crumbling pretty bad. Here is the brand new one. It is not chrome. It is just black. Nice new plastic. Everything's ready to go. Magic Mike's getting that reassembled, and it'll go back onto the truck. This side looks equally impressive. It looks actually very nice. This truck, even though the miles are high, has a lot of life left in it. Let's go ahead and hop under the hood. As you can see, this thing is apart in pieces. You say, oh my goodness, why is the intake off, or at least the upper plenum? Because you cannot get to the valve covers unless you take it off. The valve cover gaskets are part of the leak of this vehicle, and it was leaking pretty badly down the side of the block. And these are the years that even Ford did this and many other manufacturers where they love to fold over the intake over one side of the engine and spark plugs and coils and things are very difficult because you have to take the upper half of the intake off to even get to them. It is what it is and that's what has to be done and that's what we're doing. I can look inside the cam covers here and see it's very well maintained. There's no sludge, there's no serious issues, no carbon, nothing building up. It looks very, very clean. For 268,000 miles, it looks very, very nice. And I really like that Toyota did the gears in between these because all you have to do is the timing belt to one cam and the gears take care of the other cam. We can see that the timing belt was just done literally 10,000 miles ago. It's due again at 358 and I can guarantee you it is going to make it to 358 because it's a Toyota. Let's go ahead and hop into the interior. Okay, we're documenting this on film again. The wizard was wrong yet again. He's close, 260,735 miles. And uh, no, I don't have the seatbelt on. And of course, there's oil pressure problems well because the car's not running. And well, uh, it tore all apart. But otherwise, simple gauge cluster there. And while we're in here, I'm going to turn off that power, save the battery. You're going to notice that you're going to see those 260,000 miles. They do have an interesting little clip here, hold papers, whatnot which is kind of interesting. But otherwise the dash is okay. You can see some marks where maybe some scuffs have gone through and everything. But again, this is a uh, 24 year old car. As we go down, you'll see we've just got some simple controls there, very classic Toyota. As we move over, you'll see, well, looks like maybe something has gotten spilled on the floor mat, nothing permanent after all. 
very simple gear selector there and our four-wheel drive system as well. As we look at our door card, we can see that it has an interesting mix of vinyl and fabric. Now the vinyl look, fabric looks pretty good over there. There's a few scratches on the door handle. We move down to the seat, which is, I'm not sure why it's in a reclined position, but um, that's what we have today. It's in really pretty good shape. I think this is mostly a single person driver because on the other side, on this area over here, on the driver's seat is a little bit more tore up, but it is fabric and nothing that an upholstery shop couldn't fix or just even a simple seat cover. As we do move to our back seat, well, it is kind of a back storage combo area. Uh, if you've ever ridden back there, it's not the most comfortable place to sit, but those do fold down so you can actually have four people in the car with you. Wouldn't say that'd be a comfortable ride, but in a pinch, it can work. Headliner's in really good shape, nothing going on there. Not even really some Cheeto fingers, it's really in good shape. Nothing sagging, no tears. On this down the driver's side door card, you do notice that they have done some improvements in MacGyver style. I'm getting the old duct tape out just to make sure that that top still stays with it. And with this many miles on the car, yeah, maybe it's a good solution. Don't know if I'd put too much more into the interior, if you don't mind, that it's in this kind of shape. As we ended our steering wheel, like we always do, great Toyota symbol in that center there. Nothing on the steering wheel otherwise, because this is classic Toyota simplicity. But good, easy to get reach cruise control and some controls on those stocks as well. Otherwise, that's all we've got in here. Let's get this up in the air and see if there's any more rust than what we found on the bumper. Ew, that's gross. Yep, it's pretty nasty. And as you can see, it's been leaking for quite a while and making quite a mess. So let's take a look underneath and see where is all this mess coming from. The first thing we found is these transmission oil hoses here are seeping through. They're actually leaking through the rubber. Those will be needing to be replaced. They're actually causing drips. And there's a lot of wetness going on. Let's go ahead and check this wheel here before we go back. Brakes are good. Nothing loose. The struts are kind of rusty, but they're not leaking. They're still good. This boot, it does have a tiny little tear, but it's still doing okay for now. It's just a crack. We go to this side. Brakes are good. Nothing loose there. Strut, again, rusty, but not leaking. Still doing fine. The boots look good. Here's our differential. It's a little wet from the leak that's coming up from up above, which you can see. All this oil that you're seeing is coming from the valve covers. It is pouring out of the, all over the block, blowing past all over these lines and everything. And then there's one last leak that's also leaking on this side. The next leak you can see is a little disc shaped thing. It's kind of gold colored. That is the engine oil cooler and is leaking where it mounts to the block. That is also pouring oil down the side of the block. So here's the steering rack. Everything feels good as far as the boots and everything is dry inside of there, but it's wet. This is all valve cover leak and also the oil cooler, just literally spraying everywhere. Here's our front drive shaft. It's been recently greased, you can tell. It's been maintained. Everything looks good there. Here's our transfer case. Here's our other drive shaft. Carrier bearing looks good. So as far as rust, I'm not seeing anything serious on the body, but on the frame, there's a few things. There's some rust like this over here. It looks like it's been repaired. Someone welded plate steel to it. I know that these frames of these years were known to give trouble, and this one looks like it has been giving trouble, but they've had it repaired and welded. This side over here is just starting to show the rust. It may be needing to have that same repair done soon. That's not something we would do here. We, that would go to a frame shop, a body shop, something like that. We're not going to weld frames here. Here's our drums. Everything's nice and dry. Here's our flex hose. Everything's good there. Everything's dry on the differential. Everything's dry over here as well. Even the shocks are dry. They look fairly new. Here's our spare tire. It's got air in it, ready to go. Here's the last part of our frame, and it does have surface rust, but it's Nothing serious back here. I'm glad to see that someone repaired the rust 
that we found in the midsection. That looks kind of scary if it wasn't fixed. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So here on this table, there's a lot of parts Magic Mike has removed. There is an upper plenum, a lower plenum. It's kind of like an S shape. You have to take both of those off. And there's lots of little hoses and lots of little things that love to break on these older cars that like to snap and they're brittle. You can see that the this intake hose is already starting to crack. It's just from age. Here we have our valve covers. Those are off. They were leaking pretty bad. So all this work just for these two guys right here. That's it. Just these two. And also the spark plug tube seals. All this stuff has to come apart. The oil cooler has not been removed yet, but we have hoses to do on the transmission oil cooler. We're also going to replace all the hoses on the engine oil cooler and the oil seal. And it's quite a lot of doing even to get that off. About as much work as you see there. So between gaskets and all the time involved, and also we got time dealing with all the rust and fighting with putting a bumper on. 1500 bucks is really quite of a fair deal. It's not too bad. And this truck is definitely worth the money because you cannot go buy another one of these even with this many miles on it for a few grand. They're still going to be eight, nine, ten. They're still going to be pretty expensive. Being that this vehicle has at least another hundred thousand miles of life left in it, it's absolutely worth fixing this vehicle and putting the money into it. I know some of you commented on my last, actually my FJ Cruiser video, that I'm pushing the Toyota thing too hard. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep pushing it and I'm going to keep saying it because all the years that I've been working in the shop, I've seen the GMCs and the Fords and the Dodges when they get close to two, 250,000 miles. They don't even hold a candle to the Toyotas. None of them do. Hondas are about as good, but Toyota is the top. So if you don't like hearing me sing about Toyotas, I don't know, I guess there's other channels out there. We're still gonna work on fun cars, interesting cars, all kinds of cool stuff in the shop. Actually, the shop is really full right now. There's actually a Sienna van and several other things going on. We're really, really busy right now, which is good. It helps pays the bills. But I will not stop with the Toyota pushing the Toyota thing. You will not stop hearing that from me. So if you're curious what kind of tools we're using to work on this one, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because this shop is full of cars, which means full of videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.